This is Cassie. She was an active person engaging in CrossFit as well as outdoor sports like hunting. In 2020, Cassie developed back pain that was so bad that she could barely walk. She was diagnosed with something known as ankylosing spondylitis, a painful autoimmune disease that causes the joints in the spine to become inflamed. Her condition continued to worsen and she began using a walker. She was 28 years old. Cassie needed some answers. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Sean Baker. Today we're gonna share with you Cassie's health journey uh, and show you how she managed to get well from such a serious health condition like this. Cassie experienced back pain for over 10 years and was just getting worse and worse and worse. She had found an answer, but it was not the one she had hoped for. I have had back pain since I was about 18. I'm 31 now. I got sick in 2020. My back just completely started to give out. So it got to the point that I could hardly walk. So my mom and I did some searching and we're like, okay, we got to investigate this because this isn't normal. So we started looking for answers and I was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis. I was diagnosed with that thinking, okay, we have an answer. I continued to get worse to the point that I could hardly walk. I was using mobility aids, like walking sticks and a walker when I was really bad. And I was like, okay, something's wrong. This isn't normal. You shouldn't be declining this fast. Ankylosing spondylitis is an autoimmune inflammatory arthritis that begins in the low back and sacroiliac joints and gradually results in the bones of the back actually fusing together. It is often treated with biologic immune suppressant drugs, which are both very, very expensive, often costing thousands of dollars a month and carrying significant side effects. Cassie was not very happy with her choices and began looking for another doctor. I was like, okay, time to find somebody else because I got tested for MS, all sorts of other things, and everything was coming back normal, which normally that's good, but you want to know what's wrong when you don't feel good. She found a functional medicine doctor who th she thought would be able to help. So I found a functional medicine doctor who tests for your root causes, so things like mold, Lyme, Bartonella, parasites. And after quite a bit of testing, I found out I have mold and I've been battling that since 2021. That's when it was confirmed, at least. Eventually, we got to testing for Bartonella and Lyme. My Lyme test came back positive. That's a hard one to test for, especially if it's covered in biofilms, basically, so it's not going to come up. But Bartonella came back pretty positive and that causes a lot of joint pain and specifically in my heels. That was one of the first things to go for me was I could hardly put weight on my heels. So I'd have to sit a lot. The concept of mold sensitivity is controversial within the mainstream medicine and some published papers actually call it a myth. While other published data is showing in reality that mold does indeed cause problems for many people. Lyme disease is the most common vector-borne disease in the United States and it is transmitted by a Borrelia bacteria that are carried by some species of ticks and it has been shown to cause inflammation, joint pain, and autoimmunity. As Cassie mentioned, sometimes it is tricky to get a positive diagnosis because as shown in research, the bacteria that cause Lyme can also form plaques or biofilms. Bartonella is what's known as a co-infection because it's often also transmitted by the same tick bite as the one that causes Lyme disease. Bartonella can also cause very significant illnesses as shown in this recent paper. In Cassie's situation, it affected her heels, for example. Cassie had originally been told she could never work out again, but she refused to accept that. And I was told when I first got diagnosed with AS, they were like, you're not gonna pick up a barbell again. And I'm like, oh, okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> Don't tell me I can't do something. She underwent treatment for her Lyme and her Bartonella infection. And then she got that, that thing that was going around recently. Cassie's doctor offered her an option she had not previously considered. So I had an appointment with my doctor. I'm like, look, I can't even eat right now. I don't know what to do. It really messed me up. He's okay. You have dysbiosis, most likely SIBO. It's time to talk about diet options. We can go about this two ways. Either you go on a SIBO diet. I prescribe some medications that your insurance probably won't cover. They're maybe going to work. We don't know. There's a good chance they won't. He said, or you can do carnivore. And I was like, okay, carnivore. I was like, I've heard of it. Tell me what this is. SIBO 
is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, a type of overgrowth of bacteria. It's normally treated with antibiotics and a specific diet, but Cassie's doctor chose somewhat of a different approach. She thought it might be challenging, but agreed to give it a 30-day trial. I've never been one who is successful in doing like really strict diets. So I was like intimidated by this. I was like, okay. I said, you're putting a lot of faith in me telling me to do this strict diet. Because even when I worked out, I was like, you have to have carbs. Like carbs are life. That's all I knew. He's like, you can think about it. And I was like, no, I don't want to deal with the medications. I'm already on four times a day meds. It's another thing to add. So I said, okay, I'll do it. And this was just with the intent to fix my dysbiosis or correct it, I should say. Following the diet did present Cassie with some challenges, but she was determined to succeed. Cassie was used to eating fairly lean meats and her mom was very skeptical. And that was the biggest challenge was making sure I had enough fat because we hunt. So we, we have a lot of game meat, which obviously is very lean. So I had to add in more fat, which that was a challenge. That first month was pretty brutal. I feel like by week three, that's when I was telling my mom, because my mom was so worried about this diet. She was very skeptical. And she's like, are you sure you should do this? You can just stop and just go back. I'm like, no, we're on week three, but we're counting down because I'm thinking, oh, it's only a month that we have to do this, have to. Over time, the diet began working for her and her other interventions helped as well. So overall, how is Cassie responding to her new diet and program? Now I'm starting to feel full. I'm not meal prepping like crazy, which takes a lot of time. Now I can just focus on other things. Like food isn't such a big deal anymore versus the way I was eating before. It's like my entire day revolved around food. However, I used to frequently visit this place that I later found out had water damage. So my symptoms were really bad when I was visiting this place. And this is when I was eating carnivore, thinking that should be helping things with my spine. When I stopped visiting this place, within a week, my symptoms drastically reduced. She's even setting some new goals to get outside more. And she is seeing her health prove in other unexpected ways. Yeah, my skin looks so much better. I haven't had a ton of acne in my adult years, but if I ate things like chocolate, I would immediately get a little blemish on my face, but I haven't had any acne since eating this way, which is really cool. Cycles became more regular. I had far less cramping and I'm having a lot less hormonal issues in terms of like temperature regulation. Like I, I had a really hard time with that, especially around my cycle. I'm training about three days a week consistently now. I, if I get a fourth in, I'm pretty excited. It just depends on where my spine's at that month because sometimes it does get a little bit achy. I'm exercising three to four days a week. And I would say I'm on about week six now of like true consistency. I haven't been able to say that in years. And now, like I'm, I was doing my deadlifts. I was able to engage with my muscles so much faster than before. It's, it's really cool. Things are clicking faster. Cassie's done so well that she tries to share the success with other people. I've had friends ask me when they're constipated, what should I take? Because they know my history now. And I'm like, we'll do carnivore. And they look at me like I'm crazy. It works. I couldn't go for several days when I was really sick. And now that we've transitioned to this, it's very regular. Most people do find that carnivore diet with no fiber actually helps them become more regular. The Lyme disease community can certainly benefit from Cassie's story. Meat does seem to have powerful healing effects. We're very happy to see Cassie regaining her health. She's doing a great job of giving others some hope and direction in their battles with Lyme co-infections and autoimmune diseases. My company, Rivero, will be working with autoimmune patients in the future and currently is accepting patients onto our waiting list. We're currently focusing on metabolic disease. Our nutrition therapy is designed to reduce inflammation and insulin resistance and restore health in an effective and sustainable way. If you have metabolic diseases such as obesity, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, or prediabetes, just follow the link in the description, add your name to our waiting list. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Cassie, keep up the great work. Thank you for sharing your story to us. We'll see you next time.